So the issue is this feeling of numb. That's the feeling you currently feel. And a friend of mine from, I think I've told this story a little before, but a friend of mine from Canada came over and that's the feeling he felt, numb. Anything, single situation. He was so numb, he's, he's, at the time he was 23 years of age, he'd never had a sexual experience in his entire life. He was numb, numb to all sexuality. He was numb to the emotions of others. If you started talking to him about the emotions, he would, start, he would just go straight into his intellect and start intellectualizing everything. And uh, he's one of the 14, this man is Luke, Luke from the Bible. And the first thing he had to do was start connecting to you know, the fact that he was numb and then start looking at why he was choosing to be numb. Because being numb is a choice. So again, the first question you ask is, what am I afraid of? And then what he did was one other thing that was really helpful. For two hours each day, he tried to allow himself to be angry. Now at the start he didn't do a very good job of it. It took him three weeks of doing this before he started accessing his first underlying sad emotion. So after a period of three weeks of, of two hours in the morning, two hours at night, beating the hell out of this uh, rubber man that he had in front of him, and with boxing bag and bat and a baseball bat and all sorts of things, he eventually connected to anger within the first few days. And then he stayed in an angry state, in this sort of numb, angry state, for nearly three weeks. And then he experienced his first underlying emotion. So if we're in a numb state, it's going to take effort to get to drill down. The pain that you experience is a result of the underlying emotion wanting to come up, but still the desire inside of yourself wanting to keep it down. Does that make sense? In the case of a headache, usually it's the underlying emotion of sadness wanting to come up and I'm wanting to keep it back down and that takes a lot of intellectual energy and it, takes, it just creates a very big, and in fact migraines are, the, are a big sign of needing to cry or any headache in fact a big sign of needing to cry but not wanting to allow myself. So the second thing I would do is pray to God about why don't I want to allow myself to do it. So you start talking to God about that and ask God to give you assistance and you guys to give you assistance to work out why. And you'll find in doing that, over the next few weeks, some law of attraction events will occur showing you that you're afraid of something. And when you're afraid, so when you realise what you're afraid of, talk to God about that. Uh, I'm not dealing with that because of this emotion or whatever it is that you're feeling. Does that make sense? So is numbness always afraid of something? And all layers that are going around the causal emotion, so remember I drew the causal emotion before, here's our causal emotion, all of the layers that go around the causal emotion are all the result of fear. Otherwise we'd experience that emotion. So they're all the result of fear. And remember what fear is, fear is a false expectation appearing real to you. It's something that you think is really real. And honestly, in many cases, it has been real in the past. That's why we feel it's real. Right? Of course, when we connect to God, we find out that a lot of things we thought was real in the past are not actually real. But, but before that time, these events that occur. So for instance, if I was three years of age and I got punished for being angry, then is punishment a real fear? Yes. Because when I was three, I did get punished for being angry. So any time I get angry, I'm going to feel afraid because I'm going to think that someone's going to punish me. So it's a real fear. It's not real anymore, but it is a real fear from the past, and that's the reason why we believe it. For many, many occasions, it is a real fear even of the future. So like Mary's had some emotions she's been working through of why open her heart to me when there's a high likelihood this time around I'm going to die as well. Well, the last time I did, and it was shortly after she opened her heart to me too, like only a year and a half after, and then I died. Like, so, so why open her heart to me now? There's a real threat of the future that that might happen. I, I remember as a sort of a 20-year-old having the feeling of, you know, cloaking my heart, thinking that is never going to happen to me again. 
but then that must also have been, you know, it wouldn't have happened at 20, it would have happened... Earlier. Yeah. Exactly. And at 20 was your last straw. That was the last time that you were ever going to let your heart be open again. So go back to that event now. This is a good way to trace back into, into emotion as well. But allow yourself to see that actually, you know, it, it gets back to that question that you had about vulnerability. Allow yourself to be vulnerable at least with God. And this is why our relationship with God can heal us completely. Our relationship with others has the potential to heal, but it also has the potential to harm. Because the other person can be in a harmful state. Does that make sense? So, if you, th if you picture it this way, that he is, he is you, right? he is some other people around you, they are going to be in different states of error. But God, who can connect to you, is not in a state of error. So God has no error. No error with love. God has no error. These people have error. If I interact with these people when I'm trying to heal myself, obviously, while it's probably good for my law of attraction, there is also the potential of harm. Because these people are in error, I'm in error, there's a potential I'll harm them and there's a potential they'll harm me. But if I deal with every emotion, like this issue of being vulnerable, with God, there's no potential harm with God if I allow myself to be vulnerable. Can you see? That. So if you can allow, you know that heart that you have that you wrapped up and said no one's going to hurt me again when you were 20? If you can at least allow yourself to start talking with God about unwrapping your heart towards God. Rather than doing it with others first, start doing it with God and see what happens. And as, it, as that God's love enters you and softens you, you'll find you'll be able to start doing it with others. Does that make sense? Yes, and, and the only... And in my understanding, because I've had a go at this and I find it really difficult, accessing anger through beating things up. I mean, I did a, I had an attempt at it, but it was just like, you know, after ranting and raving and saying, how do I feel? I feel fine, you know? <laughs> yep. Nothing's when happening. you're in a numb state, which is the state that you'll close yourself down towards, you'll find that it's going to take more than one time to actually start accessing what's underneath it. You can't expect years and years of suppression to be undone in one little session trying to get to some anger. Is that the only way in, to um, anger? Numb covers, usually numb covers fear, but in between numb and fear might be anger. But maybe not. You know, all of us have different personality. All of us have a different way of, that we we address things of what happened when we were little. There's a high likelihood that there will be anger in between, but there may not. There may be just some fears capping the sadness-based emotions. Right? But to be frank with you, for you to go into a state of rigidity when you were 20 with your heart, there's got to be some anger there. Does that make sense? So, so if you can take yourself back to that state, how you felt, the, even the anger you felt in that state. Like, why did you close down your heart? Why did you put this rigid sign on my heart saying, no, no one's ever going to get in there again? There's got to be some anger-based feelings related to that. <laughs>